when God took that risk in creating man, giving man a free will, he wanted man to use his will rightly, to love. He wanted man to use it rightly. And because he had a free will, you see, there was an, uh, open possibilities, there was open potential for man. Because if we are self-determining individuals with our free will, then our choices are not determined until we determine them. And God gave Adam and Eve every reason to continue with Him. God gave Adam and Eve every reason to continue with God. And I believe God genuinely expected them to continue in the garden. He genuinely expected it because He gave them every reason for it. But God foreknows all possibilities. God foreknows all the future possibilities. So he wasn't caught off guard. But I believe that the Bible is revealing that he was genuinely disappointed in man. Genuinely grieved in his heart with man. So it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. He wished he didn't make man. Because man was doing contrary to what he created the man to do. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, we have all these recalls now in America with uh, these products that are coming from China. You see, uh, and they're not fulfilling the, uh, the purpose that they were supposed to fulfill. You buy a toy for your child, and you want that to, to bring enjoyment to the child. But you find out maybe later that that toy is harmful to the child. You recall it. That's not the purpose of the toy. That's not the purpose of the, the, the uh, you bought it for. Or in this case, that the Creator created it for. And so they were called something that was meant to be for enjoyment, and yet now is harmful. And right after this situation, when God repented and it grieved Him in His heart, you had the story of Noah's flood. That was the universal recall. <laughs> uh, I was talking to um, David Ravenhill, and he was, we were talking about this passage. And he says, he, you know, he, when he was working with churches, they would try and um, help the little kids, the little children, to understand biblical truths and biblical principles. And he said that here it says, God, God was grieved with the sin of man, grieved that he had made man, so grieved that God wept for 40 days and 40 nights. So, that's the story of this play. But it was a general, it was, it was a universal recall. God says, I wish I didn't make these people. Because they're not doing what I made them to do. I'm wiping them out. I'm taking it back, he says. I'm starting over. That's what a manufacturer does. You make a, mis you make a mistake uh, in, in this product, or this product malfunctions on its own, you see. And uh, you take it off the market. You wipe it out, and, and, you, and you start over again. And so man malfunctioned of his own accord, of his own free will, man malfunctioned and chose to live selfish and in rebellion against the divine intelligence and the divine God, to, to live in rebellion against what God had told him to do. So it grieved him at his heart. I think this passage gives such insight into the heart of God. It grieved him at his heart. So here, this passage talks about the heart of man and the heart of God. And the two are not the same. The heart of man was on evil. The heart of God is good. Because we were made in God's image, we have a heart. A miniature replica, so to speak, of God. Is what we are. It's fantastic if you think about it. That we are uh, tiny replicas of God. He has such an infinite heart. We have a finite, a, a, a smaller version of that heart. And God wanted a people, every, uh, you know, a good parent wants their children to grow up to be like them. That's what a, 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 a parent expects and what a parent desires and, and raises that child and tries to give that child every reason to obey and to do what is right. Uh, you think of family government. And a, a parent tells the child, eat your vegetables. <laughs> and the child says, oh, I don't want to. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't feel good. You see? But the parent knows 
It's good for you. Might not feel good. You know, uh, broccoli and the rest of it might not might not taste good. But the Baron says it's good for you. I know better than you do. And so I'm fit to govern you. I'm fit to raise you. Some parents, uh, you know, they're, they're not very wise. They're not fit to parent. Some people don't have the mental capacity for the parenting. Uh, a child is told by the parent, don't play in the road. You'll get hurt. The child says, it's fun to play in the road. I like it. But God says, uh, or the, the parent says, you know, I, I know better than you do. It's not good for you. You'll get hurt. And that's the relationship God had with Adam and Eve. He said, don't eat from the tree. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Oh, but Adam and Eve, they, it says Eve looked upon the tree. She saw that it was good for food. Saw that it was good for knowledge. Said, but I want to. So she did it. So she acted on what she, uh, what she thought would feel good, rather than acting upon what she knew was good. To live by her emotions rather than by her intelligence. Because the emotions, the, uh, the flesh, that's the contact point of the devil. He tries to get you to do what, whatever feels good, rather than what you know is good. So God was raising these children, so to speak. They were new to the universe. He wanted to show them what was right. He wanted to keep them in line. He wanted to keep them right, and they rebelled. And just like any parent who has rebellious children gets grieved at their disobedience. Why? Because because that uh, that parent had such higher hopes, such higher expectations. Wanted something good for that child. But if, if it, you know, when I grew up, my mother, of course, loved me and wanted the best for me and tried to teach me right. But when I started breaking the laws, the community, she could not uh, keep me from the consequences. I had to face them. And I went to jail a few times. And I was, I was hurting myself. But you need to protect the community. And so God needs to protect His creation from that which is harmful and destructive to everything that's valuable. That's why He needs to separate the wicked from the righteous. Because the wicked are a threat to themselves. They're a threat to everything around them. They're a threat. That's why He's created, you know, hell, the universal prison, a place of isolation, the Bible says there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's utter darkness. And uh, as I've said before, heaven will be heaven because there's no sin there. Heaven wouldn't be heaven if there was sin. Heaven wouldn't be heaven if everyone's lying to each other, stealing from each other, murdering each other. That doesn't sound like heaven. That sounds like earth. That sounds like hell, in a way. And uh, so heaven will be heaven because there's no sin there. Because there's God there. There's a God of love there. There's loving people there. There's loving saints there. They're going to love each other. There, people are going to worship God. They're not going to be sinning against each other, sinning against themselves, sinning against God. There'll be peace there because there's no sin there. There'll be well-being there because there's no sin there. It's beautiful. And that's what, you know, that's what the will of God is, not merely for heaven, but for everything. Because he says, as it is in heaven, uh, we're supposed to pray, uh, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's God's will for earth. Secret, revealed, uh, sovereign, whatever you want to call it, that's God's will for earth. That it be uh, as it is in heaven.